Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Talking Rangers podcast. Today is Wednesday, December 13th. I am Bubs alongside Joe. Another episode coming at you today discussing all things New York Rangers. Joe, how's it going, man? It's going good, you know. A uh, couple games, uh, you know, not the greatest from the Rangers, but uh, again, still in first place. Other than that, you know, it's been pretty good, though. Yeah, I agree. This is probably our first episode where we're covering multiple losses here as the New York Rangers have lost three of their last four uh, with last night, a loss coming to the Maple Leafs seven to three, but they still are in first place, 19, seven and one 39 points through 27 games this season. Now get, we'll get a couple days off before they host the Anaheim ducks at MSG on Friday. Um, I guess we'll start here. Just what have been your overall thoughts? Because this is probably, and we'll, we'll break down the Capitals Kings Maple Leafs game and really, what has gone wrong for this Ranger team recently? This has probably been the worst stretch of hockey they played over the last four games defensively. Um, just they're flat. I don't, you know, whether it's goaltending, that seems to be the argument right now among Ranger fans is defensively they're not playing great in front of Igor. I feel that, but I also feel there are some plays that Igor is not making that he was making last year and even earlier in the season prior to the injury. It seems like ever since he came back from his injury, like he's been a tick off at times, letting in some of these softies. Um, what have been your thoughts on this team as a whole over this stretch of rough games? And no, it's not time to panic, but this does need to hopefully come to an end soon because it, they definitely are stuck in a rut, rut right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like offensively, it's kind of faltering. Like they're kind of in yeah. kind of like a stalemate where they're not really playing terribly offensively, but no one is really burying and seems like a lot of these guys like Lafreniere and Trocek who are pretty hot are kind of cooling off, not really scoring that much. I mean, you still got Panarin who's playing pretty well, but the numbers are down on that line. And that's kind of like a rippling effect on the rest of the lines offensively. I mean, the first line is yet to really play well at all this year, even strength, which is again, really concerning. Um, defensively, I think the forwards have been okay. Um, third and fourth line again, not really producing much, but again, it's kind of hard when you have, two or three guys in the lineup that aren't NHL players per se. I mean, you're losing Hedl, you're losing Kako. Granted, Kako isn't playing great, but I mean, he's a big upgrade over Benino or Berzinski on that third line. Even you can put him on the first line. And then Hedl, obviously, we've been missing him like mostly the whole season, but still, yeah. he's one of the best guys on the team with the puck, skating the puck up the ice, creating offense. And this is as far as the biggest problem, I think, is the defense is has been terrible i think they've been getting caught on and rushes like crazy kind of leaving out igor to draw and i think Igor hasn't been playing great but i think it's not helping him that we're giving him yeah. hot man rushes all the time which i think that's a, ne a negative on a negative where he's not playing great and then the rangers defensively aren't playing great so it makes him look right. a lot worse and i think mentally he's kind of taking a hit there where he's playing worse than he probably should be but again i think everybody's going to go through some rough patches we just got to Got to make sure this doesn't start really getting worse. I mean, they can afford to lose a couple games here and there, but you never know. Someone else can get hurt. But granted, I think this probably is going to be the worst they play this year. Yeah. And hopefully, I still think they're playing around 500, even with this bad hockey. But it's getting a little concerning. I think the defense has definitely been something that they got to fix. Yeah, I agree. And look, everybody goes through it. I mean, the, the Golden Knights a couple – Couple, about a week ago, they were kind of going through a little bit of a rut before they've rattled off four straight. So every team's going to happen. It's the eb ebbs and flows of an 82-game season. They were hot to start. This is their first stretch. I mean, just a couple days ago, they lost back-to-back -back games for the first time, and it's December. So while that is a good thing that they've been playing well, they are hitting a rut here. And I think defensively, like Igor is definitely not playing well, but there is a lot of those odd man rushes. They're turning the puck over way too much in the neutral zone. Like there's at times and, and people have been kind of saying it a lot where like in past years, Igor has bailed us out. Like there's been so many times where there's odd man rushes, turnovers in the neutral zone and it's a two on one, three on whatever, whatever it is. And Igor makes a great save and has bailed us out with him not playing as sharp, not bailing us out. Like the defensive mistakes are that much more amplified right now because he's not playing that elite Vesna type goaltending. And it seems like the Rangers at times are getting a little complacent on defense where they're just not. Does, does, doesn't have like that much effort. Like even in some of the games that they're winning recently, 
it's six, five, it's four, three. It's a lot of these high scoring games where they need to put up four or five goals to win. If they're not getting that because their offense has been struggling. like that Capitals game was a perfect example of the Rangers just getting destroyed. Like if their offense doesn't put up three, four goals right now, they're going to get crushed every game last night was a similar case. I mean, they put up three goals defensively. They were just terrible letting up seven goals. So it's been tough to watch, but defensively, this has been something that I feel like we've talked about for a while has always been the defense. You could even go back to the Henrik Lundqvist days, the defense in front of them, not always helping him out. And that's kind of the same case. You're not trying to compare Igor and Lundqvist, but Igor hasn't been playing as well. And I think the Rangers still have that mindset that when he's out there, they can be a little bit, I guess, more mistake prone on defense or they don't have to dive in front of pucks or do all these things in front of Igor because they feel he can bail him out, but he's not bailing him out right now. And I feel like in quick, they don't have that mindset. And that's why they've been playing so much better. Like, do you feel that that way as well with this team? They still have that mindset that Igor is so good. I'm not saying he's not, but quick's been better. It, it's there's not really many. It's like a controversy amongst Rangers fans to say Igor's struggling. He's struggling. There's no other way to put it. It's not on him, but Quick's been the better goaltender. Would you yeah, I agree. I, 100%. I, I think that definitely is probably something going through their mindset ever since the beginning of the season, how they kind of saw yeah. like both those goalies. I think they probably elevate their game a little bit more when Quick is in that, just the fact that he's not Igor. Um, I definitely think that Igor has – had some rough patches as far as the the defense in him, but are in front of him. And then I don't think he's been great. I think some of the goals he's given up are softies. And again, you yeah. can, I don't want to say, cause I don't know what, how he feels like physically, but you can blame it on him being hurt or whatever. But I think more so right now, he's just not playing great. Um, I think last year around this time, again, he wasn't playing good either. And he kind of turned that around. So you kind of yeah. just got to hope that he continues and gradually gets better as the season goes on. Um, and then I have a lot of faith in Igor to be Igor, the Igor we know during yeah. the playoffs. So it's got to be cleaned up, though, defensively. I think that these odd man rushes are not sustainable. And if that keeps happening, you can see them lose a bunch of games in like the next 10, 15 games. And I also yeah, think I that – real quick, I also think, though, a, a common theme is them going down in games. I feel like those yeah, three out of the last four games, I think they gave up the first goal. So I think that's a big thing where you're not playing great defensively and then you go down. I think that's something that they got to really try to get that first goal because they're not playing great defensively. And I think that first goal is important. Yeah, it, it's so true. And you made a great point. And I definitely glad they brought that up here because that's been something that was like, just forget about the defense, but like the, the, the early slow starts and that's on both sides, like offensively, like last night they weren't getting a ton of pressure early on. The Maple Leafs were just dominating them early on in the games. And then, you know, they take a penalty early on, get on a power play. But the slow starts, it's simply not sustainable. It's just not. You know, the no-quit mentality is great and all. But come postseason time, if you're on the road and you're down 2 nothing or 3 nothing early on going into the second intermission, like, or the first intermission, it's going to be a long night. You know, you, you might be able to come back in these regular season games, but, you know, once you fall down early and team starts four-checking and you just can't get anything going in, in the O-zone and, you're getting dominated at the neutral zone and there's odd man rushes left and right. And you're getting dominated with speed and stuff. It's just, it's going to be a long night. And I think unfortunately recently you've seen that where yes, last night they made a strong push back, but in these games, Ottawa slow start capitals. I mean, they allowed one goal in the first period, but they didn't do anything. That was brutal. Um, even the, even the sharks game. I mean, they were lucky to come back in that game or else we'd be talking about the loss to the sharks, which is, which isn't pretty. So, the slow starts have got to stop too. And I feel like, I mean, I guess you could probably agree here. I mean, the slow starts, I feel like that's for, for both, both goalies. I don't think that's just Igor. Cause I mean, they got, they, they got up to the quick, good start against the Kings. I believe they, they scored the first goal in that game. They took a two nothing lead in the second period. Yeah. And that was like, yeah. And that nice was like look. their most dominant win. Like they haven't had one of those four, one, five, one wins in a while. Yeah. It seems like defensively they're playing a little too lenient. I'm, I don't know. It's, it, it is frustrating, but I mean, I don't want to keep banking on, oh, well, you know, we're in first place, so it's all yeah. good. But like, I think a lot of fans kind of, it's either they're going one way or the other. And I think you kind of got to be a little bit in the middle, like, hey, this team's not playing good. They're not playing good defensively. But at the beginning of the season, we were playing good, so we know how we can play. And we've gotten off to that good yeah. start where we can afford a little bit of a rough patch. Whereas I think some people are kind of like, oh, we're in first place. 
it doesn't matter how we're playing. We're in first place, which I think you can't yeah. do that. And then the same side is we've done so well this year. I think to discredit that and just say, oh, we're screwed. We're playing bad. I think you gotta got to be in the middle there where you can address the problems, but also look at the past games and earlier in the season, how well we're playing. I think that's a big thing where fans need to kind of just sit in that middle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I trust this, like just, you know, a lot of stuff's been thrown around today on Twitter, but I trust this coaching staff so much more than I do last year's coaching staff to actually make adjustments and do things to help this team and actually help things in practice and practice a little bit harder, um, force the guys to play a little bit harder, you know, because it is a grind. Again, you're not every night you're going to have your best game. There's going to be some nights where you're going to be tired, you're going to be worn down, you're going to be slow, teams are going to, again, you kind of get that mindset of complacency a little bit where it's just like, oh, this is just another game. We lose. It is what it is. And that seems to be kind of what's entering the minds right now. And you hope they could hope they could shift that. Um, what did you see? We'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of flip back here to a positive for a second because that Capitals game was terrible. There's not much that needs to be talked about there. I mean, they got they got smoked. Um, but a positive here over the last couple of days was the win over the Los Angeles Kings where Jonathan Quick was able to get the job done against his former team, only allowing one goal on 26 shots. That's a 962 save percentage. This was a game where, again, the Rangers, were, as we mentioned, were able to get out to the early lead, and they were able to keep their foot on the gas and put up four goals. What was your takeaway from, from this game? Was a good overall performance in what has been kind of a, a rough patch? Yeah, I mean, they played really good defensively. I feel like the Kings never really got going at all. I think they were good at the beginning of the first period, and then the Rangers kind of just quieted it with getting yeah. those goals. Um, they got up on that lead, and I think they played sound defensively. I believe it was the third period with all those friggin' penalties. That was crazy. Oh. And I think that kind of helped the Kings a little bit get back into that game where they ended up scoring. But yeah, I think aside from those, that, that, that sc those scrums and those penalties – I think the Rangers were pretty good in that game. Uh, defensively, I think they definitely stepped up and they realized, hey, we cannot come out and play how we did in Washington. That's unacceptable. And I give a lot of credit to the coaching staff. They came back, played well. Um, big win over a team who hadn't lost in regulation on the road yet. And they were just coming off an 11-game win streak. I think they lost the night before. They blew a lead against the Islanders. But it's nice to beat a team like that, you know, because – you. You look at it's weird because you lost those two games to the teams that aren't great, like in the Capitals and the Senators. But yeah. then you see the Rangers can compete and can beat the good teams. So I mean, I was a little, I felt better. At, I think that Kings game they definitely needed to win because if you look at four in a row, if they lost four in a row, that's that's another story. I think that's a big game that they needed to win. Yeah, no doubt. You know, at home, coming off of that tough loss, second half of back to back, like that was a game. I, I totally agree that you kind of need to win because if you go out there and you lose four nothing on saturday and then you lose four one to the kings on sunday and you follow it up with seven three against toronto there would be a lot different feeling i think around the fan base right now losing four straight than there is with the win in this game and in the tough loss last night against toronto um what were your thoughts I, I i'll admit and i just want to get the jerseys here for a second i thought the jerseys looked a lot better on the ice than they did in the pictures would you agree like what was your thoughts on the jerseys actually watching them live my first reaction was um i'll be honest with you i thought they were like, oh, these are practice jerseys i swear i thought they were practice jerseys yeah um, i actually they, like them better the setup like usually i wait till kind of get like form an opinion on the jerseys when i see like the socks and the pants and everything yeah. the helmet I thought it looked better than the original where you just saw the jersey. I still thought it was bizarre looking at like the captain letters right next to the logo. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, they the C's and the A's were like on top of the logo. It looked so weird, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's a nice jersey. I, I don't think it's horrible. I think it's kind of just no. plain. Like, again, the, the, the no shoulder, they don't have yeah. anything on that. I think it looks more like a Prax jersey, but I don't know whoever made that jersey. The, the logo is absurdly big. I, yeah. That's my takeaway. That's all I'm going to say. It's, I've seen worse, definitely. I actually thought they looked better in, per, like, I wasn't there, but I actually thought they looked better live than they did on just through the photos. I actually but, thought yeah, the, 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 the like, right they didn't do enough effort, though, on the back of the jersey. It was just like blocky, like white letters. Yeah. And I didn't like that. I think the font, they could have done a better job. Yeah, there's they've definitely had better jerseys. I'd say the Lady Liberties are probably better than this. But even those, 
Like I like. I mean, the, like, I mean, the lighter blue ones I like. I think the darker blues, the original re- reverse retro ones, were like the same thing. Where like, kind yeah. of like a practice jersey. They didn't really do much on it. I feel like you don't want. No, to go I mean, I like. The... I think simple is good, but they got to do a little bit more. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say. I like the concept of having the logo on jersey because so many teams do that. Yeah. But they got to shrink it a little bit. <laughs> definitely. Because the C's and the A's, you make a great point. But I mean, look, if they do, yeah, if they win a lot in them, we'll like them. Or one and zero. Oh. They've got nine more games left. I remember last year like, they couldn't win with the reverse yeah. retro. They were losing yeah. all the games. Yeah. I remember the one game they played like the Oilers. They're up three nothing in the third period, yeah, and I think they lost. They blew it. It was brutal. But um, the I think they played. I think they wear them again against Anaheim, which will be Friday, which should be a win. Like Anaheim's not good. They're last. That's a game. Got, yeah, you got to win. You got to win. That's kind of a bad performance. Look, anything could happen, but San Jose has now jumped them in the Pacific standings. I think San Jose is at 21 points. Uh, Anaheim's at 20. They're playing well, though. So I give last. San Jose credit. They're starting to oh, they, no, they are. Yeah, they were playing like an expansion team the first week, but I got to give credit for to David Quinn. He's been able to turn it around a little bit. I mean, they almost beat us, and then they beat the Devils yeah. on the road, which isn't easy. Going out east for a young team like that who's been who was playing poor to play well. But either way. Um, we'll see if they do, if they do more winning in them, we'll, we'll like them, but they're, they were all right. Um, not, not, not the best, but I guess they, they could be a lot worse. Um, either way, moving on here to last night's game, which was ugly. I'll start with this, that, that period, that, that, uh, penalty in the third period on Gustafson. I, I didn't like the call personally after seeing the replay. I didn't love it. Whether or not the Rangers go on to win that game. Probably not because they just played so poorly in the third period. So even if that penalty doesn't happen, although the power play and the goal and stuff kind of jump started the period. But what were your thoughts on that call? Because that's been a little bit controversy um, on that. Call. I, I don't know. Don't, I mean, I'm not going to worry about. I don't it. care about that call. They they, yeah. they got down three goals in the first period. Like yeah, yeah, you scored two in a row to get it down by one, but that game that shouldn't have been a game they won. So even if they won that game, I'm like, eh. That wasn't a good game. I mean, the penalty, granted, probably wasn't a great call, but, I mean, they're going to get calls like that all the time. You can't really complain. I think penalties, yeah, you always want to complain when it's bad, but then when it's in your favor, you're okay with it. Yeah. As long as it's not like a key penalty at the end of a game in a playoff game, then I'm not really going to say much. But it could have gone either way. But, again, they they, they didn't deserve to win that game. They were so bad in the first period. Like, to go down, I believe, 4-1 in the first period – that's yeah, and the and the goals were so crammed together because they scored yeah, bang, bang, bang. like yeah, and then he had the Wheeler goal in between. Wheeler was on fire last night. He doubled his season's <laughs> goals. <laughs> but no, nah, so you bad. can't like you this. You just can't let up four goals in the first period, and especially against a team like Toronto. And and that's what was so frustrating about last night's game. That was the second half of a back to back for Toronto, and they were coming off a loss. Which, yeah, and you know, like you heard in the pregame, like, wasn't worth it saying like. They had injuries. They had like guys were yeah. sick. They were all the flu. Yeah, they had a and flu they, running through the they team. They get blown out of the building on a on, on their going. On, they were on a back to back. Is ridiculous. Yeah, especially the way they lost against the Islanders, yeah. where they came all the way back and then they lost in overtime. They got the injuries, all that stuff. Like it's just you, four goals in the first period is inexcusable, and then. The goal to me that just put me over the edge was that Austin Matthews goal in the second period. Look, you know, Miko was able to get the power play, which was a nice shot. Um, and then Blake Wheeler on the on the rush with an absolute snipe, the best play he's had as a Ranger. Uh, the, the Austin Matthews goal, he skated through three guys. There was no defense, and then they shot on Igor, and he scored off the rebound. Like, that was defense, but then the goal right off the faceoff that Igor looked like he couldn't see it, Like that, that was kind of a, a softy one that he should have. Like what were yeah. your thoughts on on some of those yesterday? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that goal was bad. Um, the Austin Matthews goal, again, bad defense. And then the one, I don't know if it was a third or fourth goal, where I think they scored like bang, bang. They scored, and then I think right after that, Austin Matthews like hit Marner yeah. for a tap-in. No one was covering yeah, was like, him. Like, I think that was both, really? like, I think that was like 20 seconds apart. I think that was the fourth goal. Like, they just scored. Yeah, uh, I don't, it was like Yarn Croak or whatever who made it 3-1 right after – Wheeler made it 2-1. They score right yeah, after we, that, 3-1, and then 4-1, like right after that. And once you go 4-1, that game's over. But, yeah. The, yeah, the defense, especially, you know what? A lot of the problem, I think, is the centers are getting out of position. 
you're getting a lot of guys open in front of the net. So uh, I see a lot of like a, the, the defensive well, yeah. positioning from the forwards is a little, if you go back and watch a lot of times they're out of position. And I think guys are getting open. Like there was a goal. It looks like remember. the one. There was one. I don't want to. was wide open in front of the net. I don't remember which one it yeah. was. I, I, Panarin's been great, but just to use him here as an example, because there was one goal. It looked like he was out of position. He was just staring at the guy. I think that's what I'm talking about. Where the guy's down, wide open, wide open the net. net. It's like yeah. Panarin, all you have to do is just step up and try and deflect the puck, do something. He just yeah. looked at him, drive, get the puck, and shoot on Igor and score. Like he just watched him. Again, Panarin's been good, but that's just. That's lazy, a little lazy. Yeah, like that, that's where, like, quick, they probably get in front of that. The only play I can recall last night where they was true, but when he dove in front of the net. He also he gave up that net. puck, though. Like, he's the one who, like, yeah. he, he stepped up, missed the pinch, and then had to come back and make a great play. Yeah. At times, too, they're, like, it's not even like team, I mean, team's four check's been good on us, but, like, at times we just can't clear the puck. But we can't yeah. settle the puck yeah. and just clear it. There was, I think it was one of the goals last night where I think, well, the one the, there was that forget it was the sequence of shots where it deflected off of Igor like three times. He probably should have been able to get one of, he probably should have been able to stop one of them and get the force to face off, but they couldn't clear it. And it was all these shots happening right in front of the net and they couldn't get a handle of the puck and couldn't clear. So that too, it's like, there's been so much pressure so consistently at times. And with the odd man rushes, it's just, it's not sustainable. Like, I don't know. I mean, look, you could take away the first period and they played a lot better, but even if you take away that, they still lose three two. Like the, the Maple Leafs like manhandled us last night, for being honest. Yeah, <laughs> like right right from the first period, and honestly, from like the get go, like right at the beginning of the game, they were flat and the Maple Leafs took advantage. They scored four goals in the first period. I mean, how many games are you realistically gonna be able to respond from going down three goals? Yeah. Not many. No, definitely. Um, how do you see them playing out the goaltenders here? Because this is where it gets interesting. Do they kind of do what they did a couple weeks ago when they played Igor against Philly and then gave quick Boston? Do then they give Igor Anaheim quick Boston or quick Anaheim Igor Boston? How do you see them playing it out? Because like if Igor was hot, you probably give quick Anaheim and then Igor Boston. But quick's the hotter goalie. I, I mean, quick, what? I think, let up, what, five goals against Boston? But that game was... Just crazy <laughs> i think they're going to play quick against anaheim you think and i think they're going to give for stark in boston I, th I think that they have trust in him they need to get him going and i think kind of like i don't it's, i mean it i guess wouldn't... playing against a lesser opponent can help you but i think him going against boston i think it might force him to he has to mentally be on top of his yeah. game and i think that's when he's the best i think maybe against anaheim he might be like worried about not playing good because of he like, okay, this Anaheim. is Anaheim. I can't give up any goals. They're a bad team. I think you kind of just trust yeah. him and you play him against Boston and you kind of just go every other game for – I'd go for other, every other game till yeah. Quick starts playing bad. I think Quick, Quick needs to start playing bad where I don't have to trust him. I think right now he's playing good. I just go every other game. Yeah, you make a good point about that because that's Boston too on the road. So, like, back second half back-to-back -back on the road. Guys are going to be a little bit tired. You're going to need to be relied on to make a lot of big saves and hopefully you can lock in a little bit more, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I could see them going either way. You do make a good point though on, cause like if he lets up four goals to Anaheim and we lose four two, like that's, that's not good. And then after that, you got Toronto Edmonton who's hot. So they could get them I and they get their redemption here in a couple of games against Toronto, but it's rough. Would you, at the lines right now, I thought the fourth line, I thought the bottom six last night played well, especially the fourth line. Um, and you even saw, too, Lavalette has done this a lot where if there's two goals quickly early in the game, so he'll put his fourth line out there to try and change the momentum a little bit, get a little bit more of a forecheck, start to put some pressure on that. We did it again last night. Like, would you, What would you do to the lines right now to try and adjust them? Because I know we were talking about this before uh, recording here. Um, well, I kind of liked how he was able to stick with the lines. That's one thing I like where he was yeah. like kind of jumbling them up. But I think eventually yeah. you hit a point where you got to make a little bit of an adjustment. And I I can't see him keep going with Kreider and Zabanajad. I feel like they have not played well enough for me to say, okay, they have another game or they, they're they playing well. The leash on that has got to be 
cut short. I mean, they have to eventually be like, we got to split these guys up. They're five not on producing five. five on five. Granted, mm-hmm. they're very good with each other on the penalty kill. And I think they have that chemistry where it's just them. But I absolutely, they need to make that change. And it's kind of hard now, though, because you don't have Hedo and Kako. But yeah, I would probably do some sort of a change where you see Trocek and Lafreniere not playing bad, but they're not scoring. I think I'd put, personally, I wouldn't have Kreider in the top six. I think he's a great power play guy. Really good. I think he'd be a good grindy third-line player where he's big, he's strong, fast. But I think what they're probably – gonna do is some sort of a recombination of the first two lines where you could see something like Panarin, Zubanejad, and Wheeler, and like Kreider, Lafreniere, and Trocek. Yeah. I think he's probably gonna give Wheeler a couple more games now in the top six, because he did score the two goals, and personally, the only guy I would really like to go up and and see on the, the top line or from the bottom six would be Cully and it doesn't seem like he's yeah. going to do that so if you're going to have to go through those six guys I think that's kind of a combination where you can go uh you can go for what do you what do you think you think that maybe there's a chance he goes with Cully on the top six I think it's possible I liked what I liked what Cully's done a lot this year um but one guy I'm pointing at too that I think needs to just like um like what I've seen so far is we were talking a lot about Lafreniere this year. I always played really well. And that second line in general, or outside of Panarin, really, with Trocek and Lafreniere, the scoring punch hasn't quite been there recently. And then the last 10 games, like Lafreniere hasn't scored. And him playing well was so crucial for us earlier in the season. And now that he's kind of, I think he's in his last 10 games. I think games, he's been playing well, though. I think he's he's just, he hasn't been scoring. Yeah. But like for, for a team that is, I feel like that needs a little bit more of a scoring punch right now outside of just, Panarin. I mean, the second line's been fine, but like Trocek, Lafreniere, I'd like to get, see them get back onto those. I mean, Trocek's not going to put up 40, but like Lafreniere was scoring at a very, or getting chancy for scoring at a very high clip. I still think he'll not score. Not saying move him up and down. I think he still No, yeah, he can. He's just, I think he'll go for around like down a little 60. Bit. He has, but I think he'll pick it up. I think yeah. eventually, like the shooting percentage was high and then it's really low now. And I think it'll return to something in the middle. I'll see. I think he's going to score like, 31 goals, 25 assists. He'll be in the high 50s. I don't have a problem with like how he's playing. I think he's playing good. I just think that you got to score. Like I know yeah. uh, there's eventually playing good. I know it sounds crazy. Isn't good enough goals. If you're not scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Did you call up Offman? I don't know. I was thinking we were talking about that. Yeah. I was thinking about it again. I I'd say probably not now. Yeah. Especially because of the cap situation and um, as far as call ups, I don't know who they can call go back down. I don't know if Bradzinski has to go through waivers. It all depends on my thing is Heedle is a question. Heedle. I don't know. Heedle coming the, back is huge. I think I don't know what they don't they probably don't even know, back. but I think they know what Kaku is. Like I think he's got a definitive injury. Like he probably hurt a bone or a, a ligament. So that's a very more clear picture. So I think that I think they'll find out when he's going to return, and whenever that is, depending on the timeline, is when they'll Heedle's, bring in Offman. Like if, if they think Kako is going to be out a while, I think they'll bring in Offman soon, just because his offensive upside. But if they believe Kako is coming back in the next month or two, I think they'll wait at the deadline, see if they get like a Tarasenko or someone, and if they don't, then I think they insert him to the lineup. But I would, I think yeah. that could be a smart move because they need the offensive upside right now more so than yeah. just like. Fourth line guys like Brzezinski, um Riley Nash, or whoever it is they're calling up. Even Pitlick. Pitlick, he's been yeah. in the lineup. Probably won't be in the lineup when everybody's back, though. Yeah. Hedo Hedo would just be so huge right now. He kind of brings they that. They definitely speed, need like, him back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's he's, a he's, shame. he's just such a, such a mystery. You haven't it's, you don't hear anything. Because he's got like the I mean yeah. what most like people are saying is the right concussion, right. and that's like his third yeah. concussion. So it's like concussion syndrome or something. He's a fragile guy. He gets hurt a lot. Yeah. It, it sucked, though. He played all of last year. looked like he was going to score almost 30 goals and then kind of went through a huge, like, drought. I was thinking this year, after those first five, six games, like, he was scoring 30 goals. I was, like, so yeah. convinced he was. He was getting, he, hadn't, he hadn't scored, but he was playing really well. So, it sucks to see, the, like, these two young guys getting hurt. And I feel like – both of them for two different reasons. Kako, because 
he never really got going, and that kind of sucked. And then Ka- or Heedle, who was playing really good, so that sucked when he went down because he was playing so well. And it kind of shortened your lineup where now Trocek, who has been really good, is now your second line center, and then Benino is a third line center. So, yeah, I but, feel bad for yeah. Kako. He yeah. like he just in a contract it, here too. Yeah, and we've talked about it a lot. Like this was an opportunity for him under a new coaching staff, similar to Lafreniere, to develop and turn into maybe not the like the pick he'll always be, or but he'll probably never be the, a second overall. Pick, no, second but I overall think pick. He's no, to be a good two way player, maybe a fifty yeah. point player. I just don't know if it'll be here, and then getting hurt stinks. Yeah. If he comes back and plays like he was, like I just don't see him coming back. He's gonna have a lot of pressure on him now when he comes back. Yeah. And he already had a lot of pressure because when Lafreniere was playing well, it was like, okay, now you got to play well. Like now you're the other draft pick that's got to step up and start producing. I don't blame him though. I, I blame freaking Kreider and Zabanachat. They, I feel like every time they put someone on that line, they're terrible. And I think that yeah. definitely hurt him and his confidence. And another thing you got to look for him at him as like he's gotten hurt two of the last three seasons. Like people forgot two years ago when we went to the conference final. He had a hand injury and missed like from like January to like March. He was out for like two, three months. So that could the be injury concerning. to me. Like I'm not a doctor, but the injury to me this year just looked like, I just don't see how he returns. It looked bad. You don't think Kako's going to come back? I mean, I, he, they say he will, but it looks so bad. Like I'm shocked that there's a uh, chance. I thought it was an ACL tear when I saw it. It looked yeah, like a same. bad ligament injury. That's what it, that same. I was like, yeah, he's done, but so maybe it wasn't, maybe yeah, it was a bone, which is uh, yeah, a little better. So just again, you would move. Who are you moving again with the the line again? I would put or the lines well, again. This is the a combination of what I would do and what I think they would do. Because what I would do is move Kreider to the third line. That's not going to happen. No, I would switch Panarin and Kreider, and then no. I would put uh, Lafreniere with. I would switch. Wait, I would switch. So um, would you go Panarin, Mika, Lafreniere? I'd go Panarin or Wheeler. Mika and then Kreider, Trocheck, and Lafreniere. So I'd be switching um, just the centers, or no, I'd be switching Kreider and yeah, no, Wheeler. you just be. Well, you'd be switching. I'd be switching yeah, the well, left wings. Switching left Kreider left and Panarin, wings. yeah, the wings. Yeah. And then, I think that they're keeping Lafreniere and keeping Wheeler where they're at. I think it's tough because of yeah. Wheeler is kind of like a question mark, but I would like to see that line of Kreider. Trocheck and um, Lafreniere, I think they're kind of like a grindy north-south line, and I think they can get well into the forecheck. I think I've seen Kreider and Trocheck play with each other last year, and I thought they played pretty well. I think they mesh yeah. well with each other. Um, it just seems like no one can play with Kreider and Zabanja, though. It seems like every time they were putting a third guy in, it just nothing changed. So last night was the start for Wheeler. Watch you think out. Wheeler uh, is going to score 10 goals this year? What is he at, four? No. Uh, I think he'll hit 10. Eh. I mean, how long did it take him to get four? 27 games? Yeah. So do the math. 27 more games to get four more, whatever that is. I can't. I'm terrible at math. What is that game? 54? Yeah. 27 more games it. after that to get two? Divide that by two. And get two yeah. more. It would be 10. I don't know. I don't even know if he'll be on the team. Yeah, my thing is he's not going to be on the team in like after deadline. April, April, March, he won't be on the team. I wasn't in favor of Kane, but he's looking pretty good. I didn't watch the game last night. Was he was he good? Well, his first game. I was watching a little bit of the games last game last. First game, night. I didn't know. He, I know he didn't do anything. Second game, I know he scored. The, so. Yeah, the well, yeah, the, I didn't. I mean, I can't know, like, he's not going to come he, out and light it up. He just is coming off like injury. So no, he he looked good though. I'm just saying exactly. I mean, yeah. like, he, like but I. Or two and see how good he is because he no, I know I'm back. just I didn't think he'd bounce back like this. I thought it was kind of aged, but it looks like his surgery is working. I mean, even Tarasenko, he's not doing great, but he's still almost like a point a game. Yeah, you really can squeeze one of those guys under the cap. Tarasenko will be this year's Tyler Mott. Get you him at the deadline. Back my dad, back though, I was like, listen, like they brought Joy brings back guys. I can see yeah. uh, Senko coming back, especially if Ottawa doesn't get going. Yeah, and I think Kane is not out of the picture. I think they're going to hold on to him. I think they're going to be in until the end. I know this it's not going to happen. I was just saying, like, speaking of guys that bring in, like they could bring back, I think Kane is – there's no chance. They're going to hold on to him until the end because I think Detroit can make the yeah. playoffs. No, yeah. I think Ottawa will be out pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, Ottawa, they're, what are, they're, they're, 
they're last. They're dead last in the Atlantic. They're yeah. even behind Buffalo. Yeah, the, Buffalo's they're, been bad. They're going to be out of it, and I a thousand percent see Tarasenko being moved just because he's on that one year yeah. contract. And I believe it would be, I don't know what the exact salary would be, but I'm pretty sure he's uh, making like five million. I assume that the deadline is around like maybe like two million. So again, 50% of that, they bring probably will have enough to get him. Yeah. They really won't have to do like a double trade. Because when you look at, yeah, the, the Red Wings will still be in, I think. I mean, what, they're at 34 points right now? They're like right they're, up there in the wild like, card. They might be in the uh, top three. Oh, no, I think they're in the wild card. I think the top three yeah, is they're like in the, Toronto, the Bruins yeah. and the Panthers. Yeah. They'll be hanging in until the end. So, yeah, I don't see that happening. But no. I could see Tarasenko maybe. That's possible, I think, because they need a scoring right winger. Yeah. Especially with the injury to Kako. Unless if Wheeler does that every night. <laughs> No, no, no. Wheeler <laughs> will be off the team soon, dude. I, I mean, look, he's he's eight hundred k. I mean, I know, but like Benino like, dude, and those guys—they've been playing well. They've been doing their job. Be, the Drew's allowed that. He shouldn't be on the first. He shouldn't even be. On, I'm the honest, he shouldn't even be. He's on the first so he, he trying to keep up with them too. It's funny. He's like, he's so bad to defensively too. And I get it when he gets like a head of steam and he starts going. He's not that bad, but he's he's so slow regarding like his was, quickness. Yeah. Like he's. Like to get off to high speed, it takes him so long, and he like his movements laterally and like to go back and forth, he's very slow. So if he gets flat footed, he's screwed. Just how slow he is. Yeah, I thought he could at least be like a 12 15 goal scorer this year for us, but I, was I thought he was gonna get like 40 points, 50 points. Yeah, he's he did what 55 team. last year, I think. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like he completely lost a step, and I guess that's why he's yeah. went for 800k. I guess teams kind of realized that. Yeah, it's possible. But anyway, any closing thoughts here before we uh, wrap things up? No, just uh, got to play better yeah. defensively. Yeah, That's it. Simple. So. I agree. So just a quick preview uh, as to what's ahead for the Rangers. They'll wrap up this three-game homestand on Friday against the Ducks, as we talked about, and then they'll go to Boston on Saturday on the second half of a back-to-back. And then they'll play Toronto on Tuesday in Toronto. So two of their next three here will be on the road. And they'll have another that Tuesday game against Toronto. And after that, they'll have another two days off before they face Edmonton next Friday. Uh, but we'll talk to you before that. So three more games coming up for the Rangers. Hopefully these uh, two days of rest help and they get back on track against a Ducks team. That's uh, not very good to put it simply so. That'll do it for episode 11 of the Talking Rangers podcast. We'll be, back, we'll be back next week with more content coming your way. Please like and subscribe. Appreciate all the support, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.